در این برنامه درباره عکاسی پانورومیک یا عکاسی 360 درجه با شما صحبت خواهیم کرد. آقای دیوید اورباک به مدت 40 سال است که به عکاسی پانورومیک مشغول است. با ایشان مصاحبه انجام دادم که توجه شما را به من جلب می‌کند. In the early 70s, I traveled out west a number of times. And when you take a picture with an ordinary camera, you know, you take a picture of one scene and, or you see something over here and it, it's another picture. And, and no matter where you look, you have a good picture. And I was thinking, well, there must be some camera out, some way of taking a panoramic of everything. So I looked around and finally I found a camera that would do it. But you can see it's a big camera. You have to carry around the camera and you carry around a roll of film. And each roll of film takes one picture and it costs about $100 for the film and developing and a, one print. This film is still good here, I think. I'm not sure. I have others that I keep in the freezer downstairs. <laughs> But yes, this is the film. So you need a processor if you're going to shoot it. You need to, this all has to be processed. I took pictures like this. And each roll of film takes one picture. And this is a contact print of the Inner Harbor at Baltimore. In the middle 90s, I ran across another camera, a smaller camera. Uh, it still shoots panoramics, but it's a little, it, the camera incorporates a, a shift lens so I can shift up to the, get the tops of buildings or if I'm up, In a valley, I can shoot down and get a valley. It's a Nikon shift lens, whether I shoot like this or whether I shoot like this. The film, as you can see in all of these panoramic, ca panoramic cameras, you can see that there is just a slit. So the camera has to be moving in order to get a panoramic picture. And as the camera moves, you record an image on the film. On a sunny day outside, this camera will take a picture in a, in a second or less. It's just like a regular camera, yes. You can use any film, any film as long as it's, you know, any ASA film. Although I can shoot this camera without a tripod, I prefer the tripod. The, the way I would shoot it without a tripod is I have, I have a rod that screws into the, the bottom of the camera here, and it has a level on it so I can see it here. So when I'm, if I want to take a picture, I hold this camera like this, and I can hold it fairly steady and take a, pan, I take a, a panoramic picture with it. This camera is a 617 by Fuji. It takes, it takes uh, again, a large negative. And the negative is about the same size as the one taken with the panoramic camera, both about seven inches long. New Mexico, taken with a Fuji. This camera is fairly unique in that it has interchangeable lenses in it. Actually, the quality on a camera like this is better than it would be on here because this is, and it's a moving camera. Almost all my sales are corporate sales. In other words, doctors, lawyers, big business, Microsoft, Intel. Most of the large corporations have my images. I like to call panoramic photography 360 degrees. I mean, it's a real panorama. Your, your area of, of interest in an image 
has to be more than just what you would see with a with a, an ordinary 35 millimeter camera. It, it has to it has to incorporate not only a subject in the middle, but it also has to include the environment that the, that you're trying to record. And and if you're taking a a panoramic and you want to stitch it together using a digital camera, you've got to take a series of images and stitch them together in, say, Photoshop to get your panoramic. I also collect pictures and I, a couple years ago, I was able to buy some pictures from a collection and this is a picture of a naval fleet, U.S. Navy fleet in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. It's a contact print made from the negative. In 1998, when I retired from NASA, they gave me this memento of my service there after 32 years. I'm an astrophysicist. The main purpose of the Hubble Space Telescope is not to take pretty pictures <laughs> of, of, I mean, that's one of, that helps with the public relations part of NASA. Most of the, the main experiments on the Hubble Space Telescope are studies in the electromagnetic spectrum whether they go from the gamma rays, x-rays, out to the infrared rays. So this whole spectrum of which the visible part, which you see in these pictures, is very, very small. The purpose, main purpose is in these other areas of, exper of, uh, of recording the spectrum and then analyzing it.